to the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast for our preview and prediction and review, all wrapped up into one beautiful package of Super Showdown, folks. I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your king of extreme, Phil KOE, joined by my indomitable broadcast partner, the three-time, three-time, three-time Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast Champion. Tony G, like, share, subscribe. Here it is, folks, Super Showdown. Let's just get this out of the way first. We are working off bare bones today because clearly our green screen is only filling in half the background. Yep. Oh, and we're getting a little bit of fuss. This is all going great. Uh, so the event started hours ago, almost 12 hours ago. We're about next. working stiffs. So. It's, it's about 11 p.m. here. The show actually started at 1 p.m. here. So we're getting a pretty late start, but amazingly, we avoided spoilers. I, I'm that alone is kind of an accomplishment. A little bit. So I'm gonna go through. We sent each other our predictions before the event started, just to get them done. I've got the timestamp. If anybody truly official. wants to see them, it is official. So first up, let's get down to brass tacks. Uh, let's do the 50 man battle royal. Let's knock that out real quick. We picked three guys, one worth three, one worth two, one worth one. Who were your three? My bit, my three point, I think somebody's getting the double feature in this event. Okay. And I think the winner of this is going to end up being Roman Reigns. And I hate to say Nate Hogan, but I'm going with <laughs> Roman Reigns. Okay, so Roman was your number three point pick. Uh, my three point pick is, now that I've completely lost it, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre. I had Drew to win the actual Royal Rumble if Seth did. So that's why I'm going with Drew here. Makes perfect sense. Uh, your number two point pick, you had... Braun! He's somebody that the Saudi audience knows. Um, he's a big guy. They love the big guys in Saudi Arabia. and He won it last year. Keep Yeah, it'll keep his momentum going at least with one particular audience. Speaking of momentum, my two-point pick, as stupid as this sounds, R-Truth. It's stupid, I know, and that's why I'm picking it. Screw it. It's R-Truth. Why not? He's hot with that stupid title. Your one-point pick. Real dark horse out of nowhere, swear them all, Sammy Zayn. No way. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> no, no. I think uh, this is the same way Shane won the uh, best in the world. World Tournament, because nobody else really wanted it. Okay. I think they're going to put it on Lars Sullivan. Okay. I'm going with Samoa Joe. He's got a little bit of momentum. Uh, they're kind of pushing him as a monster. I'm just going to go ahead and say Sami Zayn has a better chance of winning than our trips. Since Sami didn't make the flight, I'm still thinking Joe has a slightly better shot. Well, yeah, but not as our truth. <laughs> Sami Zayn still has a higher bet. Than Sorry, Speaking but, of your dark horse, he is facing the Lucha House Party in a three-on-one handicap match. We got. Uh, really? You want to just do this on three? One, two, three. Lars. Lars. That's easy. What? Now, the, the real question is how many minutes will it take? It's not gonna three, take maybe even four. That's a filler match. Uh, Shane McMahon, Roman Reigns. Who you got? Really? I guess really. Who you got? Uh, I know who you got. Tell him who you got. I got Roman, Roman Reigns. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, maybe Hogan comes down, I, it, but no one's I, got It's got to be Roman. He's been on a streak since he's come back. It's obvious. It's Roman. Duh. Part of me thought maybe they give Shane another pay-per-view win. It's got to be Roman. It's just got to be. Uh, Demon Balor versus Andrade. I see Tyler. Demon? Obviously Demon because it's the Demon. He doesn't lose as the Demon. Never. No, he just this doesn't. Would, this would be dumb to lose as the Demon. I'm curious how he's going to carry that over to the set. Uh, Braun and Lashley. Braun! And I, he's, I, he's got a good double I feature. agreed exactly with that, too. It, it makes no sense to have Lashley win. I don't get it. Uh, then we move into a title match. Seth versus Corbin, universal title. I'll let you take this, champ. I think it's obvious Seth Rollins retains. Everybody waits for the Brock Lesnar cash-in, but it does not happen. More on that in a minute. I think you're half right. Brock's going to come down, cause some chicanery, some oddities, some schmozzery, if you will. Okay. 
and it's going to cost Seth the match, wow. and Baron Corbin's going to get the roll-up, and then Brock's going to walk away all <laughs> dastardly, still with his briefcase, in which it will happen. Kofi versus Ziggler for the world title. I've got Kofi to win. I got Kofi. You got Kofi to win. Not like it matters because Brock's going to cash in. Exactly. On that. So, that was what we both, uh, it was uh, simultaneous. We yeah. sent the messages. Yeah, exactly. Brock's going to cash on Kofi. We're going to get Brock on SmackDown with the world title. Move to Fox. Fox. Exactly. That'll it makes too much sense. It makes too much sense. So. Uh, then moving down the card, Triple H, Randy Orton. I actually uh, did go back and forth on this one a little I bit. I didn't. It's going to be Triple H, obviously. I think it's Triple he's, H as well. He's really trying to get himself over as the final boss of wrestling. He just beat, at the last Super Showdown, he basically yeah. single-armedly beat Undertaker yeah. and Kane. That's why I went with Triple H, too. He seems bulletproof on these shows. After that loss to Cena, the first one, he's been on fire at these overseas shows. No brain. Okay. Then the big one. <sighs> This one perplexes me a little bit. I went back and forth on it. Goldberg Undertaker. It pained me to not pick Undertaker. The a WWE New York mark, mark. A New York mark is going with Goldberg. We've seen on the overseas shows that Undertaker will do the job. So, Undertaker's not going to win this match. It's going to be Goldberg. I think it is. Surprisingly, Phil. I got. Taker. Phil marks out for the taker, being the Georgia guy. Doesn't pick Goldberg. I know, I know, I know. Everything's so, upside down, but here's the fun part. I do terrible on these overseas Saudi shows. I fully expect to be handing this to him in like three hours when we get done watching this show. So those are our predictions. The matches are all said and done. We're going to sit down, watch the show, enjoy it casually. We'll do a little segment here if we absolutely need to, but for the most part, we're going to jump into the review once we're finished watching the show. So we're about to sit down, start the show. We will see you here shortly. And that is the conclusion of Super Showdown Saudi Edition. Brock did not cash in. He was gonna, no. he was gonna, but he did not. We had a very fun little tease there with Hayne and tripping over the ropes. Seth taking advantage of the low blow and chair shot. Loved it. Thought it was great. Still disappointed. Didn't cash in on Kofi Lane. Yeah, yeah. I digress. So. Uh, that match, we gave three stars to Corbin Seth. Seth retains. I got to agree. It was a serviceable match. Um, the wrong man won. It should have been Corbin and oh. Kofi. Win the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast Championship. That was why we tied. It was because of Seth Rollins, Aaron Corbin match, and the main event, which we will get to. We will get to. Demon Balor Andrade also gave it three stars. I it never hit that year for me. Uh, good match though. Uh, it, it did feel a little jet lag. It did. I, I agree. Good match though. Demon wins. No right shocker there. there. Yep. Uh, Shane surprise win over Roman. Really? I mean, it is the call it the best in the world. Shane. So, instead of protecting the streak of Roman Reigns, since beating leukemia, they give this win to Shane McMahon. He beat now, leukemia, but was he really able to beat the best in the world? No, he was not, unfortunately. Shane's riding this heel momentum. Good on Shane. I gave that two stars. I think I gave it... What, what, what did I end up giving it? I have two for you as well, and I think you No, re re revise it. Revise All it. Right. Give one and a half. Okay, revising one and a half. Yes, sorry. Upon go. greater meditation. Fair enough. Then, of course, the wonderful handicap match of Lars versus the Lucha House Party. Uh, one star. Yeah, one star. Yeah, that's about what that deserved. You, um, you give Lars this monster push, and then he wins by DQ. Don't know what that was about. Shouldn't even have been There's about. been some backstage politic involved with him, so this might be Whatever. a punishment. It was not good. It was pointless, and it, it just slowed the pace of the whole card down, and I didn't like it. Sorry. There you go. Yeah. Moving down, bit of a shocker here. Randy Orton defeats Triple H. 
I went back and forth on my pick of Triple H. I went with the safe pick. I wish I hadn't because I would have won outright. But I'm still shocked Randy took the W there because it is Triple H, the final boss of wrestling. They did do a segment. It was a throwback to their match where they both hit their finishers and kicked out. They did that at, I believe, Mania right away in the match. They did that here. They both kicked out of each other's finishers. Surprisingly, Randy has had two RKOs kicked out of on major shows this year. Feel like Randy's on his way out if the RKO is not as deadly as it used to be. He's folks. always one shoulder injury. Exactly. I gave that uh, three stars. It was a good storytelling match. Nothing stellar here, but good storytelling. And I hate to agree, but I agree. Fair enough. Three star match. I said that at the beginning of the match. You did. I'm guessing three to three and a half stars yep. serviceable match is what we're going to end up with here. Yep. And it wasn't I, a marquee name for Triple H, so they didn't go above and beyond. Don't worry, KOE Nation. I promise to use my powers of clairvoyance for good, not evil. He's full of crap. He will use it for evil. Moving down the line, we had the Braun Lashley Monster Musley Fest. And, yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, honestly, it was a little better than I expected, and I gave it uh, two stars. Uh, star and a half. Yeah. That's what I gave it. It was two, like, and you're talking to a guy who loves Southern Big old hoss booking, yeah. but this just didn't do it for me. No, could have been more. Should have been more. It is what it could've, is. Could have, would have, should have. Braun gets the win. Uh, Kofi defeats Ziggler. No Brock Lesnar cash in. Uh, Xavier with some heel work there. They were even shooting everything like Brock was going to come in. We were hoping. We were really, really hoping. But uh, Xavier gives the assist. Ziggler has uh, rights to another match in a steel cage, it looks like. So we're going to continue this feud. Good for them. This never really hit the stride I expected it to. I gave it two and a half. God, I hate to agree. Okay. But I'm going to agree. Okay. Two and a half stars. I mean, it was a great serviceable match, but we were all expecting more. I did. I really thought it would be better. I did. So. That's probably why we judged a little harsher. The Battle Royal. The Battle Royal. It was not a Royal Rumble. Otis and none of the stole guys, it. Yeah, Otis stole it with the Caterpillar double elbow drop. Move of the match, hands down. One star. Honestly, it, at one point, I couldn't even tell if guys that were in the ring were even there at the beginning. And Monsuno? Or who, who, yeah, who the local it? guy. Gets the local the guy. I mean, we don't know who he is, but he's a local I guy. I even had Joe. they got to start building up local talent. Joe was my one-point guy, and I was cheering for Elias, but nope. Is what it is. I gave it one and a half. It's, I was wondering when Elias is going to start talking smack on the local uh, hometown. Not tonight. Huh. No, not Where, tonight. Why do you suppose that is? Eh, I'll, I'll, I'll rack my brain on it later. Yeah, that's fair. Then, of course, main event time. Uh, this was, even though some of the matches were disappointing. We we're going to cut the last half off the match. It would have been better. We were still on the edge of our seats for this. Yes. It, it was how many years in the making? First time ever. Big name legend. Big name legend. And two spears right out of the gate. We're like, oh, my God, is this going to end right then and there? No, it didn't. They kept us invested. They kept us surprised. There was some color. Goldberg hits the post. May have actually concussed himself because he was groggy as hell after that. So, I, I loved it. I thought it could have been a lot worse. That's for damn sure. Uh, I gave it uh, three and a quarter just because of who it is, obviously. Main event, big stage, and it was much, much better than I anticipated. Three and a quarter. I hate to say this. It's a three-star match. Um, really, it's like a two, two-and-a-half-star match. But All right. Oh, as, color. And they got color, so it is better, even though you don't want to admit that color makes the match better. Absolutely. So, I. Right. There's guys in ECW who made their entire career just off getting colored. Oh, that's not true. They did flippy shit before flippy shit was cool. And concussed with, themselves with chairs. With shots. chairs. With chairs. Yes, yes. But getting back to this match at hand, uh, that Goldberg, I had no idea that you had added the brain buster to your. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Undertaker was. Dropping Undertaker no. on his head. Undertaker was not thrilled with the finish of that match. No, you could see in his face. He oh, was he was, pissed, he was, he was angry. He was disappointed. And yeah. there's a chance he might have re-aggravated an injury. So Goldberg might have a concussion. Undertaker's got a messed up. Yeah, back. yeah. Now the question is, was that a 
purposeful blade job, or did he actually just whack his head? I think it was on purpose. I don't see any. Now, granted, Goldberg's not used to those big wraparound <laughs> screens on the turnbuckles, and he's used to just sliding in right next to it. So he might actually. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll have to we check, were kind of joking at one point. It's like on one. after he's was all bashed up and walking around stumbling, Goldberg's like, "All right, Kevin Nash, we've got Hall coming in with that taser. All right, you're gonna hit me with a power bomb now, right?" Like he, he might have yeah. been, uh, he might have been back in Starcade '97. Yeah, so. Yeah, I think that's '98. Uh, let us know in the comments. But here we are, living nostalgia for unknown reasons. Undertaker Goldberg, it happened. It was wonderful. It little it groggy happened. at the end. They still do, drink. Yes, yes, there was some clunky parts. I mean, it three stars. It was right. Taker, and it was everything. So, and that tied us up. It did. For the Revolutionary Wrestling tied Podcast Championship. Champ. Retains. So, for now, the record still. The overseas Saudi shows in the desert, the house shows. I do a pretty good. So, at so good at calling. Came very close. Did not win the title tonight. So, it's I remain. Just like Greatest Royal Rumble. I remain your champion once again. And we will see you at Stomping Grounds because that's the name of a pay per view now. That it is. I'm waiting for Brock Lesnar to ask in his contract. I will only wrestle if you call this pay per view Great Balls of Fire 2. Electric Boogaloo. Make Just it happen. Like everybody has to say that in the build up. Make it happen. Make it happen, Brock. You're the only one who can. So, join us for Stomping Grounds, Great Balls of Fire 2, Electric Boogaloo, oh. all of the happenings in the world of professional wrestling right here at the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast. Like, share, subscribe, folks. I am your King of Extreme, the Sultan of Extreme for this evening, Phil KOE. I am just humbly Tony G. We will see you next time.